Email pop-ups are among the most widely used and effective email list building strategies. The app company Sumo analyzed 1.7 billion pop-ups and found that on average, the conversion rate was 3.09%. Static inline forms have only a 0.58% conversion rate. That means that pop-up forms are five times more effective. The upshot of that is if you get 100 daily website visitors, you will build your list by an additional 92 subscribers using a pop-up form every month. So let's have a look at a pop-up form in action. If we launch my website, hellobabydirect.com, and we wait a few seconds, we'll notice that the pop-up form appears in the bottom right-hand corner. If you enter your email and click subscribe, it will then add you to the email mailing list for that website. Simple as that. So how can you get the best performances out of your pop-up forms? Firstly, choose the best time to display the form. It's annoying for users to immediately get presented with a pop-up form when they arrive on your site. Instead, wait an appropriate time to show your message. This allows visitors to engage with your content first. A good rule of thumb is to display your form at around 50% of the average times users spend on a page. For example, if visitors spend two minutes on your page, show your pop-up form after 60 seconds. This means that your call to action will be in front of engaged visitors who are more likely to sign up. You can find your average dwell time on Google Analytics. If we log into Google Analytics and we go to reports and then engagement and then overview, we can see the average engagement time for the site. So in this site, it's nearly two minutes. So it's best to show the pop-up form after a minute. In order to entice your users to sign up to your email list, you need to offer something of value. Users are bombarded with requests for their email on every site they visit. Offering an incentive to sign up will markedly increase your conversion rate. Incentives can include money off, exclusive free content, or early access to events. This, in this example here, the user is being offered 10% off if they, their next order if they sign up this mailing list. And on this site, which is a blog, they're being promised if they sign up, they will get access to exclusive content. So they're saying that they will get content which no one else can, can access. To be successful, your form must be mobile friendly. Mobile traffic accounts for over 50% of global website traffic. Therefore, it is vitally important to ensure that your form is mobile friendly. To ensure that your form is mobile friendly, it should be easy to exit. The close button should be prominent so mobile browsers can return to the website quickly. You should keep the form fields to a minimum. The fewer fields, the less space the pop-up form takes on the mobile screen. And there should be a large call to action button. This makes it easy for potential subscribers to give their contact details and sign up. Here is an example of a good mobile contact form. You can see the close button is very prominent. The fields are prominent. There's only two of them. And the sign up button is very prominent. Finally, your pop-up form should be easy to close. The best way to annoy a website visitor is by blocking the content they are viewing with pop-ups that cannot be closed. To avoid a negative customer experience, make it easy for visitors to close your pop-up. Here an example of two different pop-up forms. You can see the one on the left, the close button is hard to find. It's, it's blending in with the background, whereas on this one on the right here, it's very easy to see. So how should you design your pop-up form for best performance? Here are some tips. Firstly, include images in your form. Pop-up forms with images convert 80% better than forms without images. You should use prominent course to action buttons on your forms. You should choose a clear color for your button so it stands out from the rest of your page. The messaging should be encouraging your browser to act. So use words like sign up, get or start, which encourage conversions by telling the reader how to act. Finally, be clear. Let the user know what they should be expecting. So for example, a form which says subscribe for daily styling advice is better than subscribe to a newsletter. As in all forms online, the easier it is to fill in the form, the more people will complete that form and therefore the more subscribers you will obtain. When building your pop-up form, you should ask for only the information you need. You can always ask people for more information once they become subscribers via a survey. Obviously you need to get an email, but asking for a name is usually also a good idea because it enables you to personalize emails that go out. So now let's look at an example of a good pop-up form. So the one on the right here, you compare that to the one on the left, you can see the image makes it much more attractive. They're using a high contrast button. They've given people a compelling incentive of 20% to sign up. Now let's look how you create a pop-up form in MailChimp. You can create your pop-up form by going into MailChimp and then audience and then sign up forms and then click pop-up form. Remember that the pop-up form will appear on the site which you have integrated with MailChimp. So you first need to have integrated your site and that can be done under integrations at the bottom here. If we 
go back to sign up forms and there is a WYSIWYG editor for editing your sign up form. So the first option at the top here is style where you can choose the font, the colors, the headings and the font size. And secondly, you can select the layout. So we have a number of different layouts with different positioning of the sign up box and the picture, etc. So let's just choose the top one and let's look at the Elon sign up box. So if you want to change this, if you want to change a particular element, you can click here, replace. You can select a different photo, let's close that. Or you can change the message, you can just click on there and change it. If you click plus here, you can choose the field you want to enter. So let's just choose first name and then we'll do last name. If you click on mobile banner, you can see how it looks on a mobile site. And finally, success message. This is the message will be shown on your site after the subscriber has subscribed. If you click settings on the left hand side, you can change the options for the pop-up box. If we do general settings, you can choose when it's displayed. So you can choose um, after a, a certain period of time and also where it's displayed. You can also determine how often it is before it is shown to the same user again. Banner settings, this is whether the sets whether the mobile banner is enabled. The form settings, show MailChimp badge, chooses whether you want to show the MailChimp badge or not. I think if you have a paid account and you have the option not to show the badge, then you there's really no need to show it. You don't want to advertise them. Finally, success settings shows how long the confirmation message is shown for. Once you finish setting up your form, you can click save changes and that will then appear on your live site.